Today we are just talking about pelvic girdle pain and lower back pain that lots of women may experience during pregnancy. Um, that within our team there are lots of specialist physios who are able to try and treat um, your symptoms and we can look at trying to help you through um, your stages of pregnancy. Um, what's really important to know is that symptoms with pain, pelvic girdle pain, lower back pain are really common but it's not normal to be experiencing these symptoms. So hopefully by following some of our advice you may find that we're able to ease your symptoms. Um, so the symptoms um, will often affect about one in five women. So as we said, the symptoms can be common but they aren't necessarily normal. Most women will find that their symptoms improve once they've had a baby, about 95% of women. Some ladies still experience this discomfort and pain postnatally and please do come back and see us for an appointment um, postnatally if you're still experiencing discomfort or pain, especially if you're looking to have any more children after this one. So where does the pain really affect? So we've got a model of the pelvis here. Okay, so this is the front of your pelvis. This is the back, so it'd be sitting here on me. Um, the front here is your pubic bone, and then it comes around the back, and then your spine will be coming up from here, okay? Um, so it affects bones at the front, and lots of women ex uh, experience pain directly at the front here, and they think it's right at the front. Then they may experience pain in the lower back, or even a little bit higher up. It can be affecting around the hips, and then what we call the sacroiliac joints, which is in here. And then you can also get some referred pain to your inner thighs, so just down in this area there. Um, your symptoms may be experienced in one or kind of a couple of these different areas. However, that may not be directly where your pain is coming from. Okay. Um, so the different symptoms that we experience. So pelvic girdle pain um, is what we will call generally some of the symptoms around this pelvis because this is your pelvic girdle and you may have difficulty with walking okay you may have difficulty with standing on one leg turning over in bed you may find that you experience a bit of a clicking or grinding pain especially at the front here um, as you're moving as you're doing things from side to side um, as you're walking you may have pain with intercourse and you may find that you're unable to do some of the things for as long as you used to, um, like sitting, standing, or walking. Lower back pain, some of the symptoms are very similar, but they do differ ever so slightly. So tend to find that you have pain with prolonged positions, so prolonged sitting, prolonged standing can be quite uncomfortable. Um, repetitive movements can be really uncomfortable as well. Um, again, turning in bed is quite a common one that ladies find trouble with. Um, and with the lower back pain, you may find that you get symptoms referred down into your foot or some sensory changes in your leg. You might experience a little bit of numbness or um, tingling. Um, again, you probably find that you can't do things for as long, so you can't sit, stand or walk for as long as you used to be able to. And lastly, one of the other causes I mentioned just briefly earlier was asymmetry. So where one side tends to move more than the other or one side become, feels very stiff. Um, can be because of that you may have fallen down the stairs or fallen over, um, especially if you have cats or toddlers or toys left on the floor tend to be quite common things. If you've stepped but you've missed the curb and you've stepped down, that can often be kind of cause a bit of a jarring effect and can cause some asymmetry. Or sporting injuries quite common tend to be skiing, horse riding incidents. Um, you may find that if you have some asymmetry that you get symptoms much more on one side than the other or you get some symptoms that come down the back of your leg just to above the knee. They're quite common areas um, that you may experience discomfort or pain and that may be more likely due to the asymmetry. Again, there are things that we can do about that through exercise, a little bit of manual therapy, and we'll talk about those a little bit later on. I'm just going to talk about some of the causes and reasons why we might start to experience some of this pelvic girdle lower back pain. So the big one is posture. It's very normal that the spine should have a couple of curves within it. These can just be a little bit exaggerated during pregnancy. Um, so as our bumps start to grow, our centre of gravity shifts forwards rather than sitting within the middle of us, it comes forwards. So we start to get an exaggeration of the curve at the lower back. You can get quite a bit of stiffness in this lower section here. 
Um, lots of ladies will start to feel that they want to hold their hands there to support. They find this becomes really quite uncomfortable. We also start to get our posture at the top coming forwards, heads coming forwards, not only because the centre of gravity has moved forwards, but also because our um, breasts start to get a little bit bigger and that can pull us forwards also. It's really important, if you can, to try and keep a much kind of uh, taller posture, trying to squeeze your bottom muscles, try to tuck that pelvis underneath and keep more of a neutral spine can really help improve things. So with our muscle changes, we get that shortening and lengthening cycle through different muscles, through different ligaments. And if we're starting to move and change the way we do things, so we're moving things more, what we call asymmetrically, so not in one nice pattern, we're starting to move one side more than the other, then what can happen is that we start to get shortening, lengthening of different sides, and that can be a cause of pain or discomfort for you. So lots of people talk to um, us about hormones, and lots of the books um, talk about, especially a hormone called relaxin. Hormones are not wholly responsible for your discomfort and pain. Sometimes they'll play a part, especially if you have an underlying condition, if you've got something like hypermobility syndrome, Relaxin and some of your progesterone will probably increase the stretch and the extensibility of your structures, of your ligaments and muscles. It's normal. That should be what is happening because we're allowing this baby to be growing. But that isn't necessarily the cause of your symptoms. Okay? We need to work with that. Doing lots of exercise can really help improve those symptoms. The other thing that some ladies are a bit concerned about is weight gain. Again, normal because we're growing a baby. The joints are gonna to have to um, put up with that extra weight. Our joints are carrying extra weight, extra pressure. It's very normal. Um, and we end up needing to use a little bit more energy to help move that weight around. That's gonna make us a little bit more tired. Um, and that can then have an effect. We start to feel a little bit more discomfort because we're tired. These are all very normal things to experience. Hopefully by doing a little bit of exercise and following some of our advice, you'll find that actually your symptoms can feel a lot better.